Hi, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. We are in a weekly reading vlog right now. I am currently 45% into The Romantic Agenda, which is by Claire Kahn. I don't know why it took me so long to pick this up. I saw this recommendation from Erica's Bookshelf on Instagram a few months ago, and I guess I just never really read the synopsis, but I just looked at, looked at the cover and I was like, oh, this looks like a cute little summer beach read. Like maybe I'll wait until later in the spring. But it's Black History Month, it's February, which means what a great excuse to read about black love, which is what I'm trying to do. Yeah, this story is very different than I thought it was. It follows Joy, who is an asexual 30-year-old uh, woman, her best friend Malcolm, who's I think the same age, also ace. And they have been best friends since college and they've had this issue where Malcolm dates women. He doesn't really fall in love uh, necessarily, but he has goals and he's like, we want the same things, we can get there. But they always get caught up on Joy being his best friend and how much he just like loves and cherishes her. And it's a big insecurity for those women a lot of time. Well, now he's met this woman, Summer. He really wants them to get along and for that to not happen. So they're all on this group trip. And Summer brought her friend Fox along in theory to entertain Joy or like create a dynamic where it's not Malcolm trying to work between the two women in his life. I don't know how I feel entirely about this setup. It feels a little immature for people who are in the 30s when you could just clearly communicate because blunt communication is Joy's thing, but I am enjoying it so far. I really enjoy the dynamics between Fox and Joy. They are very different people. Fox is kind of broody and Joy, like I said, big on blunt communication. And because she's ace and does not feel a lot of, doesn't feel sexual attraction, she has put herself in these moments with him where like she thinks she's made him uncomfortable because she's being so blunt to like get ahead of what she thinks the expectations are. And he's like, oh no, I just, I'm actually just really attracted to you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. And so there's that part where she, it feels very mature. And then we keep hearkening back to her and Malcolm and their whole thing. And but that feels really immature. So I'm struggling a little bit with it. But the audiobook is great, the narrator is great, so I'm just going to keep chugging along and see where it takes me. Hi, happy Monday. Um, it's after work. I had the most stressful day ever. But it's over now, and let's talk about books. So I finished The Romantic Agenda, and I loved the back half of this book. This is one of those cases where I'm glad I stuck it out in the end. I debated DNFing towards the beginning because... I think as I mentioned in the last clip, some of this, some of the scenario felt a little immature, but the more I started to understand Joy and Malcolm specifically, the less I felt that way because I haven't seen a ton of ace rep in books, specifically adult romance books. And I don't, this isn't me speaking directly from experience, but as someone who's been in a situation where it felt like I was years behind other people. I can understand why from the outside looking in at this setup, it felt immature. Because in a way, I, if you read it, you'll kind of understand what I'm saying. Joy and Malcolm don't meet each other until they're like 20. And it's the first time either of them is meeting another person who is ace and who is experiencing just like the same challenges when it comes to the romantic parts of life. For most people who are um, like hetero and I guess allowed to date through like their teenagers and stuff, it's like you have all these other experiences that happen and no matter how big or small they are, they happen prior to you being 20 years old. And there's, I guess, more time to know what you do and don't want and in theory, more time to get better at communicating. I know not everyone is great at that. I totally understand that. That's not always the case. But the things where I felt like I was initially judging them for, I'm so sorry, my dog is playing with the ball back there. The things that I was initially judging them for weren't fair. So as we got to know them more, I honestly wanted to hug both of them. I still felt like Malcolm was kind of an ass, if I'm being very honest, but not because... I don't know. I don't know. If I, I, can't, I feel like I can't really explain without 
spoiling a lot. I just feel like he took joy for granted. Um, but I really enjoyed their resolution. I love, love Fox. He was incredible. I was worried about how he would factor in to the story because although this is a romance novel and obviously there's going to be a romance at the, the center of it, that wasn't really the center of it. It was more about how do two people of the opposite sex deal with the perception of their relationship, the realities of their relationship, and the weird places in between when you're just friends and you're just friends who sometimes feel romantic feelings towards the other one without telling them, even though you should. It was chaotic, but it was good. It was chaotic good. The audiobook was great. I would definitely recommend doing that over the physical book. I tried for a little while with the ebook and I just, it wasn't the same. It wasn't the same. So I just kept going back to the audiobook and I'm glad I did, especially because a lot of Fox and Joy's interactions, it helps to hear inflection. It helps to hear tone for sure. For sure. Otherwise, it can come off kind of indifferent when they don't mean to be. So we definitely recommend doing that. So now I have to figure out what I'm going to do next. I am already reading another book, but it's a just for me book. It's one of those books that would pop up on, say, a monthly recap, but won't. I'm not going to vlog it. Just because it's nice to have some books that are just for me. And so I'm reading one of those by Shane Rose. I absolutely love her work. I need to pick up Butcher and Blackbird next, partly just because I started it on Sunday and I really enjoyed the bits that I got. I think I'm going to get it from Spotify, actually, for the audiobook. I've heard rave reviews about the audiobook and about the male uh, lead's Irish accent. Interested to pursue that. But then part of me has had a, such a good time with annotating that book as I've been going, which isn't a thing that I do a lot, but sometimes the mood just strikes. And it definitely happened with that book in particular, just because there's just like a lot of like funny moments so far that I don't want to lose out on that. And that book is still available on Kindle Unlimited, I think. So I think I might grab the ebook vibe with that for a little bit, because at least then I can still highlight. And then if I'm like, so obsessed I need to hear it now then I will download the audio but I think that's going to be the next book I have book club in 25 minutes it's a virtual one thank goodness because I don't have the energy to go anywhere so I'm going to crack open an adult beverage get ready for that and then I will have an update for you later on this evening with where I am in Butcher and Blackbird hi quick update I am reading Butcher and Blackbird and I am obsessed I just hit chapter 10, which is 100 pages in. I think it's chapter 10. It's the one called Dijon. These chapter titles are hilarious. I love it. The mutual pining, the angst, the flirting, the banter, the blushing. <gasps> it's just so good. It's so good. I, why did it take me so long to read this? Shout out to me, though, for never returning my Kindle Unlimited uh, books when I don't read them. I still had this checked out on Kindle Unlimited, and even though it's technically not on there anymore, they just never yanked it back. So it's sitting on my Kindle, but I heard such glowing reviews about the audiobook that then I slid over to Audible, which is only because I couldn't find it anywhere else, if we're being very honest, um, and bought it for like the discounted price they give you whenever you own or... Uh, check out a KU book that has an audiobook that's like not included in the membership. It lets you buy it for like half the cost. And so for like $7, I bought this audiobook. And I'm glad I did because I will be listening to this again. Whoever is doing the voice acting for Rowan, that accent, so good. And the shout out to the audio engineer. This is so random, but... I'm sure you guys will know this. Sometimes when you listen to an audiobook where a character has an accent and you put it on like 1.75 speed or like 225 and it's like not a round number, it like gets really weirdly jumbled and it just sounds awful. So then you're forced to either slow down or speed it up so that it sounds good. And I don't have that problem. I don't have that problem. I'm blitzing through this book. I'm probably going to finish it tonight, but I just had to come on and tell you, oh, it's so good. 
There are definitely some moments that I think for people who aren't into dark romance are going to have some like, cringe might be the wrong word, but just like, no, I think you'll cringe, but not because the content is cringy, but in the way that you cringe when you're watching like Criminal Minds or like SVU or one of those like shows and the killer's like going into detail about what they did and you're just like, Ugh, it just kind of makes you like that. Because there are a couple of moments where that happens, but, like, that's the background to me, and their pining and, like, the romantic comedy of it all is the forefront. So, I think if you're easily, not scared, but if you don't like spoopy things, like, maybe it'll bother you a little bit, but I don't think it will. It's so good. It's so good. The vibes are so lighthearted, despite the heavy... Uh, heaviness of their hobbies because it's neither of their jobs to be serial killers it still feels fun and refreshing and it's just so good it's so good I also love Lark and Lachlan who are actually the main characters for the second book that comes out I think this summer I can't wait because Lark is like Lark is just here for, for Sloane, trying to be a girl's girl. She's like, you should make a new friend, especially one who understands your dark and twisty bits inside. You should do that. You should hang out with him. And she's, like, there to listen to her. And even when Sloane's like, man, I feel like I'm, like, going a little crazy doing this. She's like, you're not crazy. Like, this is perfectly normal. And she's just there for her. And then Lachlan is... He's a big, scary killer, man. That's what he is, and he knows it, but he also loves ribbing the shit out of his brothers, and it's just fun. It's so fun. So I'm having the best time, and that's the end of this update, because I'm going to go back and keep listening to this until it's time for me to go to bed, and hopefully by that point, I will have finished the book. So, good night. Okay, as you can see, I tabbed a lot. A lot. Five stars. No notes. This is so good. This is so good. <sighs> Check the page and a half of content warnings in here. It's a dark romantic comedy, heavy on the dark. But if you read a lot of dark romance, this won't feel dark to you, honestly. It's just fucking funny. <laughs> and they're great, and I love them. I love watching them love each other. This was so good. This was so good. I don't even know what else to say because I don't want to spoil anything, but you will fly through this. If you get the chance to listen to the audiobook, please do. It is so good. So good. I just... I don't know why it took me so long to read this, but I am kind of glad I waited because uh, Lark and Leather, Leather and Lark, Leather and Lark comes out... In June or July, I think. Maybe August. I know it's this summer. It doesn't come out till this summer, and it's only February now. So I have a while to wait, but not as long as if I had wait, read this when it first came out, you know? Silver linings and all of that. So, 
Wow. I don't, I don't know what else to say. It was so good. It's just, you read a romance book and you know when it doesn't feel like you're being led somewhere. Like you're just being plopped in to their lives and you just feel lucky to get to watch it. That's what this felt like. That's what this movie like. is so good. Wow, yeah, I don't... <sighs> Swift and Saddle is next, but I think... <sighs> it's 8.51. I don't think I'm going to start it tonight. I think I'm going to wait and start it tomorrow instead. And then, yeah, I think I'll start it tomorrow because I just want to sit with this in my brain just a little longer. Of it just being the only thing in there living rent free, you know? I'm not ready to let go of this. God, this was so good. I just... Wow. Good on you, Bryn Weaver. Good on you. I might not be able to eat cookies and cream ice cream for a while, though. My gosh. That was a choice. That was a choice. I'm not gonna be able to look at a mandolin the same again. Wow. Wow. Hello. Happy Sunday. I sound awful as you can tell probably i've spent the last few days like fighting allergies because texas decided that spring should start in february and my body just can't it can't i've been reading swift and saddled and having a very good time with that for now i'm going to take you to target to get my pickup order for more cough drops so that i can soothe my throat and we're going to slide into rudy's for some breakfast tacos and then we're going to head back home to finish because I only have, I think my Kindle says I have an hour left of that book, which is great because I wanted to finish it this morning. I'm having such a good time. I can't wait to tell you about it. Let's talk about Wes and Ada for a second. I love them. Um, they're perfect. I have no notes. I was not worried, maybe the wrong word. I was nervous about how Wes would be portrayed and like how much of him we were going to get just because in the last book, like he was definitely around. So I'm adjusting the camera settings so you're not, I'm not blown out completely. He was there, but he was just kind of there. And he kind of makes a comment about that in the beginning of this book of how he feels like everyone on the ranch has their thing and he's just Wes. Like, he's not special. He's just kind of there. And he very much takes on this role of taking care of everybody else and making sure everyone else has what they need. But it's like, who's taking care of Wes? And Ada comes in and she's just... She's so focused on the guest ranch and getting that together while also, like, dealing with, like, mentally unraveling her marriage and trying to figure out these things that she started to believe about herself and like whether or not they're true whether or not that was more about her ex than it was about her and Wes is just so patient with her this man respects her boundaries which as she makes that comment is she says he respects my boundaries which I know is the bare minimum but also I'm not used to it and it's just nice to have that and he's so sweet with her there's a scene where he's teaching her how to drive a stick like he's driving and she's in the truck with him and he's like commenting on it but then he actually also teaches her because she talks about how when she was married she didn't have her own car and her husband's car or truck was a stick and she didn't know how to drive it and so she just felt so trapped unless she could go somewhere that was walking distance and he's like you never have to feel trapped again like I will teach you how to drive sticks you can take any of these trucks that are on the ranch and go do what you need to do because she's driving this like 97 accord that's like barely hanging on and like also is not made for dealing with you know ranch gravel roads and things like that so i don't know they're really sweet i absolutely love them so much of this story is just about emotional growth rather than a specific plot and i have been kind of craving that recently so it's been a nice change of pace so i'm gonna go pick up some breakfast and head back to the house and Read the last of this book and update you guys soon. <sighs> I finished Slipped and Saddled. It was so good. I don't know what to say without like major spoilers. So here's what I'll say. Wes is so sweet. So, so sweet. The sweetest. I appreciated that um, as we went on this journey with Ada to kind of 
revive herself from the shell that her ex-husband had left. She grows a lot in this book, but she also isn't like fixed by the end of it. She's not a perfect person. She still has the inkling to like run when things get harder or scary for her. And I think that's really realistic because in a lot of these books, sometimes that doesn't happen. And you're like, if that was always your instinct before, it's not going to go away just because you're in a better place. Like that's just not always realistic. So I really liked that. Loved that we got plenty of Teddy and Brooks and Gus and um, Emmy throughout this. And we got to see more of Cam, which is great. Cam is Gus's ex. She They shared their daughter together. And that dynamic was great too. What else happened that I loved? Yeah, I, the other things I really liked, I can't really tell you without spoiling plot points. And this book isn't out yet, so that would not be fair. I will say, as far as rec who to recommend this to, if you enjoy the general like ranch feeling of the Elsie Silver um, Chestnut Spring series, but you want less spice, this is a great recommendation. Um, if you enjoyed Off the Beaten Path and didn't love that it was closed door and you wanted just like a little bit, happens here because there's only like two or three spicy scenes in this book. It is a very, um, not an overly emotional read, but it is emotions forward. And it spends a lot of time of these two really getting to know each other. And once you understand like where Ada is, you kind of understand why they don't just immediately dive into that, despite the opening of the book being the way that it is. I don't know what else to say other than this was great. Five star read. Really, really enjoyed it. Can see myself reaching for this as like a quick reread as a palate cleanser after something heavy or when I just need something that's going to scratch that not quite a Hallmark channel itch, but like a little bit. It's a good time. It's a very good time. Cannot recommend this enough. And with that being said, that's the end of this week's vlog. Thank you so much for tuning in. Would absolutely love it if you would like, subscribe, do all those fun YouTube things. And I will see you in another video soon.